we, we're having this podcast right now, and um, if I had perfection um, as the standard, we probably wouldn't be doing this podcast mm -hmm. because the sound isn't as great as it could be. Yep. And we've been interrupted three or four times by my five and seven year old as they run in. Yep. And um, this is not the perfect scenario to run a podcast with. Well, as Sheryl Sandberg said, you know, the CEO of Facebook is like, done is better than perfect. Period. Like, let's realize that things are not going to be just the way you want them right now. There's going to be, you're going to have to do things over Zoom calls instead of in face-to-face. -face. You're going to have distractions from your family. You're not going to be in the office. You're not going to have um, total um, um, focus on certain things. Instead, just get things done. I love it. Done is better than perfect. We are here because we know the outcomes in our lives are within our control. That taking absolute ownership of how we eat, sleep, train, think, and connect with each other is how we'll optimize our health and happiness. That chasing excellence is how we grab hold of what is possible. Our mission is to Five, live on the run, four, always three, chasing, two, never one, stopping. Go. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Chasing Excellence, another remote episode of Chasing Excellence. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Thanks, Pat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So today I wanted to do something kind of fun. We have, um, in the past, it, it was actually like episode, I, I looked today, like ep in the mid thirties and we're at like 120 something at this point. So, uh, we did an episode called like the 10 habits you should stop having. Um, and a lot of people responded well to it. So I thought it might be worth revisiting in light of everything that's going on now. Cause I'm really curious, how you would take that same mentality, the, the same thinking and, you know, what, what stays the same and what maybe changes given every, you know, the context of everybody's lives today. And so, um, so before we get into that, I want to just kind of quick reminder of what, what the original 10 were. Um, and so they were, don't hit the snooze, don't get mad at traffic, don't be late, don't tolerate gossip, don't watch the news, don't pass judgment don't eat and scroll, don't check email before noon, don't leave dishes in the sink, and don't wait for perfect. <laughs> so I don't think anybody's worried about getting mad at traffic right now. So uh, it's a good re that's a good example of like why I wanted to maybe yeah. translate this or, or see what this looked like um, for you these days. And so you sent me, uh, right before we started recording, you sent me a new list. Um, and so we'll go through one, one by one, obviously, but, but high level, it's don't snooze, don't react, don't multitask. Don't use the phone in front of the family. Don't watch TV before bed. Don't eat sugar or processed foods. Don't check social media until. Don't one up. Don't project. And don't expect perfection. So there's definitely some, it's interesting, there's definitely some similarities there. Um, yep. And obviously some, there some new ones. Right? Of They're course. Yes, yeah, so, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so let's just start at the top and go from uh, don't snooze, which again is from the original one, but, but, why is it still here? Why is it still important now? Yeah, so now. First, let's put some concept into what now is yeah. in case people are listening to this, you know, three years from now. This is um, – I hope things are different. We are um, – yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we are in the midst of the, of the um, COVID-19, coronavirus, uh, virus, social distancing, quarantine. Um, we are probably about uh, about a month into this thing. Yeah, about that. Did you yep. say? Yep. Yeah. Um, so here's the list. So um, here's kind of the, first off the reason why uh, why this type of list anyway. So a lot of people create like and talk about what should you be doing and to do lists and habits that you should participate in. Well, I think equally as powerful um, for anyone is this don't do list. What can you eliminate from your life? And the second kind of like disclaimer to this list is that this is not the typical. Um, wash your hands, um, mm. uh, don't go out in public, wear a mask, wear gloves. It's not the normal like Corona specific stuff. This is more um, principles that will not necessarily health related or how to get through this and, um, and, and avoiding the, um, the, the virus. Yeah. It's more about how to continue to thrive through this. And, yep. um, do what we want to do and be productive and um, live the lives that all of the people that listen to this strive for. So 
Um, with that in place, the first one is um, don't snooze. So this is a carryover from the previous one. And the reason behind this is one of my principles in general is if you do choose to snooze in the morning, it's easier now than ever because um, – there's nothing immediately that you have to get up for for most people. Yeah. We are essentially in perpetual summer vacation. So what we need to do is live our lives with a certain level of discipline. And discipline equals freedom. Um, discipline is the thing that brings everything else that we want in our lives to fruition. What we need to be able to do is not be the person that procrastinates and puts things off. We need to be the type of person that does hard things. Well, the very first thing you need to do today is get up when the alarm goes off. We need to start our lives off and start our days off with some level of uh, continuity, some level of consistency, some level of discipline. We need to be the type of person that does hard things. So what we need to make sure that we are doing is that we are not hitting the snooze button. Let's be the type of person that gets up and gets the thing going because that's who we are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I don't have anything to add to that. I love that. Um, and that is something that, well, it's also, it's, it's something that we talk about. I mean, yeah. that don't snooze thing. It's totally, it's not unique to this scenario. It just becomes magnified. Yeah. And it becomes so it's more important. It's more, it becomes more important now. Yeah. So because it's every day is sort of a Saturday for a lot of people yep. that doesn't change. And here's the other part of that is just from a, a ritualistic aspect of this and an actual sleep component, um, waking up and going to bed at the same times is actually one of the principles of, of healthy sleep hygiene. Mm. So there's other actual physiological aspects beyond the psychological of I do hard things. Um, just out of curiosity, I, I assume, because I think you just answered it, but you're still waking up yourself same time and going to bed same time no, that actually, you did before? So, that no, I'm not waking up at the same time. Interesting. Yeah, but I'm not snoozing. So right. I used to wake up at 5.15 every morning. Yep. I now wake up at 5.35. Got it. So... I added an extra 20 minutes of sleep because I can, because yep. I don't have to, my day actually does start a little bit later before everything kind of was hinged yep. on me coaching the 830 class. Yeah. That now doesn't happen. Now it's basically nine o'clock is when I have my first meeting. So I have an extra 30 minutes in my day. So I allowed myself an extra 20 minutes of sleep. Mm -hmm. So, um, the idea here is not I don't, I'm not telling people to get up at crack ass at you know, dawn. I'm not saying get up at 5.15. What I'm saying is don't procrastinate yeah. the waking up process. Yeah. Bring some discipline to it. And you choose when that is. If that's 8.35, I'm cool with it. But don't set your alarm for 7.45 and then snooze twice. Mm -hmm. You still working out first thing in the morning or did that move too? I am, yeah. No, that's, uh, that's stayed consistent, that's yeah. Um, I need – that's me. I need to do that. Yeah. So I also, with this list, I also tried not to do, um, don't um, put off working out. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Um, like it's like not no double negatives. These are literally like <laughs> don't do. Yeah. It's easy to do the double negative. Right. It is. Because that becomes a to do. <laughs> okay. Next one. Don't react. So this is um, – this is a principle. It's really something I lean into hard with my team, meaning my staff, and even harder with my athletes. Yep. This is a, a principle and a foundation um, in terms of mental toughness, in terms of living a life of fulfillment. Um, what most people do, this is uh, Stoic philosophy. This is Viktor Frankl. This is um, any coach that has anything worth their salts will talk about the difference between responding and reacting. And reacting is emotional. Reacting is immediate. Reactive is impulsive. Reacting is letting things um, become overwhelming. Whereas responding is tactful. It's thought out. It's productive. It's what professionals do. What we need to do is distrust our natural gut reactions, which is tied into our hormones as human beings, fight or flight or something else. There is an emotional hormonal response. You need to quell that and push it down. Viktor Frankl talks about the space between the stimulus and the response. There is a little gap. The more we become aware of that gap, the more likely we are to edge towards responding, calculated, versus re reacting, impulsive. What we need to do, especially now more than ever, when things are going poorly, you're trying to get work done and your, um, your five-year-old is uh, just spilled their milk and now you 
you have a meeting to get to on Zoom, and now you have to clean up the milk, and you're going to be late. Like, instead of, and by the way, I this is a challenge for me, and it's the reason most of these I'm bringing up because they're challenges for yeah. me. And yeah. It's not things that I'm doing perfectly. It's things that are brought to light because it's things that I'm trying to be ultimately aware of. So I'm trying to go on a podcast, and um, my seven-year-old is asking me to print something out, and I don't have access to the printer at my house, and I'm going to be late for this meeting. Yeah. I have to figure out how to print something through my wife's iPad that I've never used an iPad before. I'm technologically <laughs> inept. So it's like it's so easy to get overwhelmed yeah. in this moment. Instead, just like take the breath, create the space. In five years, you're not going to remember this moment. Don't let it overwhelm you now. It's not that um, import, important. Just kind of like – Deal with it in the moment and respond to the challenge appropriately. So the take home here, the shortcut is don't react, yeah. but respond. Um, I was going to ask when I first saw it on the list and, and you kind of just answered a little bit with that, with that story or that example, but like, is, is this time specifically a challenge or specifically challenging your ability to respond versus react simply because of the, you know, and it's the stress that everybody's under, but the stress of being in the house and, and everything else being disrupted and all that stuff was like that. The Is that the reason why this especially is, is important or is still important at this point? Yeah, I think that I think of what's happening is during this time when we are all quarantining and social distancing um, is that things tend to get magnified. Yeah. And um, this is going to kind of show up throughout the whole list. Yep. Um, but basically, like, you got to kind of let go of some stuff like yeah. It's not – this is kind of getting us down to the last one, but um, I'm going to skip it. It's, this is, it's not going to be perfect, guys. Like yeah. you're, you're not going to have the routine you used to have. Like there's going to be some adversity. And it's not just like dealing with a loved one that's sick. There's adversities in these micro doses. And a lot of times the micro dose adversity is harder to deal with because when it's in our face and, okay, I have the flu that I'm going to have to deal with for, for 25 days – you can kind of – sometimes that's almost easier because it pulls everything out. Yep. All of the meetings go away. Everything else gets pushed away. And it's like laser focused on this. But when you're trying to create some semblance of normalcy and you have all these micro doses of adversity like – um, dealing with Wi-Fi connection yep. and Zoom calls going bad and five-year-olds spilling their milk and asking for printer and tugging on you and asking to play what you want to do. Like they want to – like they don't know the separation. They yeah. want to play Tickle Monster right. in the middle of a Zoom call. It's like – it's harder to deal with the little microdosing than it is the big ones in certain aspects. Yeah. So yeah, now more than ever, this can be a challenge. Yeah, spot on. Okay, next one. Don't multitask. Okay, so this is kind of having said what I just said, what we want to try to do in this time is not try to – because when you try and do multiple things at once – so first off, multitasking is a fallacy. Yeah. People that say that they're good at multitasking are good at being distracted. Um, anyone that says like uh, I'm really – like that's something that we should try not to be good at. What we should be really good at is segmenting and doing certain things really, really well. Imagine Katrin, David's daughter, training for the games, but also being really good at answering emails mm -hmm. during her training session. Mm -hmm. Like, she's never going to become world class if that's the case. Now, she has to answer emails. So, what she needs to do, what any world class, high level performer does, is become laser focused at the task at hand and then completely switch gears and go laser focused in the task at hand. Anybody that does multiple things at once is not giving it its due and is being distracted. What we need to try to do is create some level, and I guess it's going to be harder now, some level of discipline, schedule, priorities, and not multitask. Not be on a Zoom call, cooking dinner, answering emails, and also trying to work out at the same time. <laughs> what we need to do is figure out what is the right time to do those certain things. So Get up and work out. Now, the workout happens before anything else is happening. You're totally undistracted. You're not checking emails. You're not looking at social media. You're not doing work. You're laser focused on working out. And then when the workout ends, the workout's over. You don't think about the workout again until the next morning because now you're shifting gears to having breakfast with your family. 
when you're having breakfast with your family, you're not checking social media, you're not checking emails, you're not multitasking. You're completely 100% present and engaged with the family at that time. And then it shifts gears to your morning meeting. At 9 o'clock, you jump on the Monday morning powwow, whatever it might be, where everyone gets together and you kind of lay out the agenda for the week for your team. And then it goes into, okay, my individual tasks that I need to, and you get it. What you don't want to do is put all those things together now more than ever because you have the multi-challenges of now. Kids and the kitchen and the, the fridge calling yeah, your name yeah. and the TV and the news. And there is no clear lines. There yeah. is no delineation between work, recreation, play, home. You need to take the ownership, take the responsibility of creating those bright lines so they don't get blurry. Create the guardrails for yourself so you can maintain the productivity. Yeah. One of the things that I've been thinking about through this is that everybody's kind of getting a crash course on learning how to be their own boss in a large way, just in terms yeah. of their own attention and their time and their schedule and all that. Everything that you just said, a lot of times, you know, whether it's school or the office or like a lot of people are always dictating, all right, here's what we focus on now and here's where we're going next. And to a large degree, like you get to hand over some of that autonomy to a boss or a teacher or whatever, somebody else's schedule, right. right? And now a lot of people are in this situation where just by virtue of what's going on is like they're more in control than they've ever been before. And we're like, most people just aren't taught that skill, that skill of being able to control everything that you just control and, and recognize that you can only do one thing at a time. Yeah. So some of that kind of like a higher level, maybe back up a little bit of this is like, to me, like whether it's Katrin or you're trying to run a business, the idea behind like massive accomplishment, productivity is it first comes down to prioritization. Yep. You got to be putting first things first, right? And then it becomes um, massive action into slash accountability. From there, you put in the levels of discipline. It's like those three, four di like um, principles of like prioritize. Then from there, take massive action, hold yourself to some levels of discipline, and then check in for accountability. If you are doing those things, and everyone kind of has to do that now themselves yeah. because they're not at work, and they don't have the boss over their shoulder, and they don't have the cubicle for the guardrails. Like You have to take those on ourselves, and I love the idea of like, yeah, quarantine crash course. Like Let's go. Let's try to become masters of our own. Excellence. Yeah, love that. Okay, you hinted at this. Chase it, Patrick. <laughs> you hinted at this one, but um, don't you don't use the phone in front of the family. Obviously, that's that's in there with the multitasking. But what what else as it relates to that? Here's a yeah. So here's like a specific inside of that is like um, because now there is this overlap between time with the family. There's this overlap between work. There's this time overlap between like the distraction of social media and text messaging with work and um, checking email on your phone. The phone is, um, to me, it's a device to um, that magnifies your distraction level yeah. and um, just puts a, um, an emphasis of I'm not present. A computer is better than your phone. Computer says I'm at work. Yep. Phone says like I'd rather be doing this than t than with you. So I would rather have people sitting at – and I'd rather not, right? I want the clear definitive lines, but the phone's the worst of them all. Mm. And here's the idea behind this. Don't even have the phone with you at all. Keep the phone in one room in the house. And it is better for you to leave the family for 30-minute chunks and spend 30-minute chunks answering text message, checking on emails, um, social media, whatever it is that you need to do. It's better to get completely separated and do that. And by the way, don't do it in the bathroom. Just go into a different room other than the bathroom and go and use your phone. And when you leave that room, leave the phone in the house. The phone is an evil thing right now. It really is. Yeah. You need to make sure that it is because I'm telling you, if we're having a conversation, I just – I'm just doing this. I'm not even looking at it. Yep. But we're, Patrick and I, we're just having a conversation. And for those that can't see us, I have my phone in my hand, and it's really visible. 
All this means is like I'm not fully – I'm sending a subconscious message that I am not fully engaged with you and I have other things that might be interested because I might get that like little ding, 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 that little like yep. notification thing, that little thing that sends dopamine rushing through my body. And I'm just kind of sitting there and waiting for that to happen because I'm sending a subconscious message that you're not maybe the only thing on my mind. It's so much better even if I'm not – Looking at this, you know, Simon Sinek says, like, you go to dinner, it's people that put the phone face down on the table. Like, ooh, Mr. <laughs> Magnanimous. Like, you're so high level that you put the phone face down. Yep. Like, no, don't bring the phone with you at all. Leave the phone at best in your pocket. I'm sorry, at worst in your pocket. Best, better in the car, even better at home. Like, yeah. It should not be visible. Your phone can't be visible. Put it in a different space in the house. Yes. Love that. Um, next one. Do not watch TV before bed. Yeah, so this kind of goes to the sleep thing. Um, it also goes to like... Uh, during this time, there becomes like a... The temptation for Netflix and chill just goes way up, yeah. right? Yeah. And... Um, it's one of those principles that we have anyway in terms of sleep, in terms of our five factors of fitness, is no blue light before bed and no technology or screens before bed at all. I'm not saying uh, – by the way, I took off don't watch the news during this time. Mm. That's how I get it. Like people need to be informed. Um, now, I'm not get, I do want to say don't overdo it and take everything with a grain of salt. Yeah. Um, and um, it's better to go to like one trusted source and then detach. You don't want to be like constantly consuming news because it's sensa it still is sensationalized. The job of the news is to sell advertising, not to keep you informed. Which educated guys get educated. This changed um, in the 50s and 60s. Um, they literally changed news was a prerequisite that the um, networks had to have on their network. The government mandated it, and they got lifted during oh, I can't remember what it was. It's either like. There was some event that happened in American history that news actually became an an, educa uh, an entertainment source, not an education, because the ratings went higher than everything else. Yeah. So the news is entertainment, not education. That's the reason it was one of those um, um, principles in the beginning, so do, don't do it. I get it. Now, during a time like this, though, it is important to stay some level of education in terms of what is happening. So get it. Listen to the governor, listen to like whoever it is that's putting in policies and practices in place for your local town, government, whatever it is. Yeah. But do not get inundated with it. And then definitely don't watch TV in bed. Do not fall asleep with the TV on because that has so many different bad things that go along with it. First, your, your sleep's going to go way down. Second, um, you're just – you're getting – this should be a quality – there shouldn't be screens in bed in bed at all. There should be a place. It's your sanctuary. The bed is for bed. Um, maybe one other thing, <laughs> uh, but really, it's it's really the place that um, sleep happens, yeah. not entertainment, um, distraction. Um, get the brain um, going a million miles an hour, overthinking, um, over stimulus. It should be a place of um, real. Uh, bringing things down. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like you need that to bring you down, okay, do that earlier in the day. Do your um, your Netflix and chill, whatever it is, your entertainment, your winding down after dinner, but then still allow that two-hour gap before you go to bed. It is a, it, it's a bad habit, and that's all it is, is a habit that we can break. And you can use that this time. Yeah. Break it now. Yeah. Um, relate, relate, kind of everything related there is, I've started to go to bed at um, like eight thirty nine, mostly because I found myself it's a very from specific like, time eight thirty nine. You go to bed at eight thirty nine. Eight thirty nine, exactly eight thirty nine. Yes, it's very a specific. very specific time. Um, no, eight thirty yeah. to nine. Um, because I found myself watching the news for an hour and a half every night, and I recognized that one, it wasn't useful because we're living through this time that we're, we don't actually know what's going to happen. We won't know what what's going on for another a year, two years, five years, and so the the constant stream of not news was just yeah. n not only not helpful but uh decidedly uh uh um harmful <laughs> stressful anxiety inducing yeah. um and so i've started to go to bed much earlier and then waking up at like 4:30 or 5 um because i found that 
not only could I be more productive at that point, but I'm far less inundated with, uh, you know, flashing news and scary things and everybody pretending to know what they're talking about. Yeah, it's really fun. The whole like pretending to know what they're talking about. Um, the thing happened. Everything's changing so fast. Yeah. But the news media, they're in a race to be first. That's what it is. They need to. Oh, here's the distraction. Uh, that's okay. Hey, Harley. Hey, Harley. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so everyone's in a race to be first. So they're going to try and sensationalize it. And there's going to be, they got to put out the next new thing. And it's not a matter necessarily if it's right or wrong. There's, it's better to put it out and be wrong. That's honestly. Yep. So, um, you can get just as much info having the info come in here as the other child. I'm <laughs> um, having the info coming every uh, one or two days. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying don't do that. You can watch the news every day, but it just needs to be, um, you know, 10, 15 minute snippets at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing more than that. Totally. Hey guys, can you guys, can you guys do me a favor? Can you guys, um, can you guys go downstairs for a little bit? <laughs> yeah. A few moments later. Perfect example, exactly, right? Exactly. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay. Yeah. So news. It's it's sensationalized. It's over. Um, and they're trying to do too much. So dot dot dot. Okay. Next one. Don't eat sugar or processed foods, which clearly is something that we talk about often. Yeah. So this is like this is like um, maybe like principle number in terms of health. Yeah. It might be number one or number two. Yep. Um, is to eliminate processed foods. Now here's the crazy part: is that people are trying to stock up on food. Yeah. And they're trying to. Um, so either one of two things, they're like, I'm at home, whatever, this is quarantine time, I can't go to the gym, that perpetual um, flywheel, right, yep. either spins in a positive way, yep. or that flywheel spins in a negative downward loop. So if people aren't working out as much, they don't have as much whatever motivation, um, they're not around other people, they're not in a motivated environment for working out, they tend to not eat as well, they're around the fridge, they're at home more, um, it's easier to grab the processed foods, they're stressed out. Because of what's going on at the time, it's easier to kind of um, pacify yourself with feel goods, um, taste goods. Just because we're going through a certain time like this, uh, we don't want to fall into that trap of we pacify ourselves or we fall into um, processed foods are okay. Particularly if we are not training as much, yeah. we need to kind of double down on the importance of healthy nutrition. Now, I get it. What people are going is like, well, I need to stock up on food because um, you don't know if we're going to go into a food shortage. I get that. If you're going to do that, here's my suggestion is don't go up on the Ritz crackers um, and, you know, the Twinkies and whatever other um, processed combos and processed crap that people are loading up on. Um, instead, Stock up on. We're not in a, uh, a situation where we're going to lose power. People are kind of going to the doomsday prepper mentality, which is they need to stock up the shelves in the basement yeah. with food that will last forever. This is not a natural disaster or a threat of like um, power outages. Right. In those cases, I get it. But right now, you have a refrigerator, you have a freezer. What you can still continue to stock up on is if you want food that lasts a very long time, is get frozen. Uh, protein, yep. frozen chicken, frozen beef, frozen lamb, frozen for whatever you fish, whatever you need to do, and freeze it and it will stay forever. Yep. Um, similar is you can get frozen fruits and vegetables or go for, as long as it's not in the syrup, as long as it's in water, canned fruits and vegetables as well. Yep. If you're the arguing that you need fruit to stay forever, you can still do that with food that was produced by Mother Earth, meaning it grew from a ground or it had a mother, it had a heartbeat. Like you want to eat food that was alive at one point, not that was manufactured by dudes and dudettes in lab coats in factories. That is edible, man-made, food-like substances that has calories and can be consumed. But it is not food. Food is one thing. It is alive. It has a shelf life, meaning the reason it has a shelf life, this is kind of like enlightening. The reason food, real food has a shelf life is because bacteria will eat it. Meaning if you leave it out, mm -hmm. these funguses and bacteria and these life forms will eat it and it will go bad. Other foods don't have that because it's not food. Yeah. That even the bacteria doesn't want to have it. It has a very long shelf life. So we need to go things that are nutrient dense, that are good for us. I, it's so paramount to our health, to our longevity, to our mental cogn uh, cognition, to our joints, to um, 
you know, that they call like, our, you know, diabetes, like type three diabetes, Alzheimer's, dementia. Like it is so paramount that we just do not go and fall for the trap of processed crap ever. And now some more than ever. Next one. Got Don't little ones running around behind me. Yeah, it's rock okay. and roll. Next one is, uh, and you and we again hinted at this one a little bit. Don't check social media until. Yeah, so this is. Um, I get the escape of social media, but I also see the distraction of social media. So what we want to do during this time, and I, you know, I put this as anything. I kind of shifted out the don't check email before noon yeah. to don't check social media because here's the deal: is um, we want to make sure you're starting your day off. My saying is win, win the morning, win the day. Create a morning discipline, a morning routine. And one of the things that will throw you off of that is social media. Social media is so distracting. Um, it is so um, uh, not important. And I get it. It's like uh, it feels good, but it's not important to what is uh, we're trying to do. Yeah. Win the morning by doing the most important things first. Do first things first. And whether that is journaling or meditating or stretching or moving or exercising or um, preparing food for the rest of the day. Hold on one second. <laughs> Quarantine time, multitask. Hey, guys, Harley, can you let Bodie out of the room, please? Bodie, please steal some of my Easter bread. Twelve seconds later. <laughs> this is so. Yesterday was Easter. Yeah. Um, we gave Easter baskets, and all Harley wanted for, for Easter was gluten-free bread. <laughs> so we gave her a loaf, and we gave her a full Easter basket, and stuff like that. But when she came downstairs, and she's like. She saw it. She, bread! I got bread! She got a loaf of gluten-free bread. It's a, okay, so that's what they're... The Bergeron house is crazy. Oh, yeah. As we're talking about processed food. Yeah, right. Uh, I don't remember where we were on... Social media? Social I, Yeah, we were there. I don't remember where what the thought you were you had, though. Something about it not so, being yeah, important. Behind, so, yeah, so it's basically the social media idea is that um, we got to do first things first. We got to win the morning. Don't get distracted because um, what ends up happening is it'll pull your thoughts away from what truly is um, um, like creates a, a fulfillment, right? Which is like um, introspection, self analysis, trying to figure out what it is you want in your life, like bigger, higher meaning stuff. It's better this like dopamine thing of like, comparing yourself comparison is the thief of all joy what we need to do is stay centered on that, at least through part of the morning now some people have a morning routine that lasts um three minutes and i'm okay with that it's three minutes of just like sitting on the edge of the bed like going through what they're gr grateful for that's great if you do that that's why i said don't do social media until mm -hmm. if it's not until you go through your three minute gratitude practice cool for me my morning routine is more like three hours it's like you know i do um, I go for, um, I do some stretching, I go for a run, I work out, I, um, I do some reading, I do some gratitude, I do like whatever it is. And it's basically like, I do like, say from six until nine o'clock essentially right now is my morning routine. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I, I'll do, um, some important morning meetings. And then if I have time to check social media, then I'll do it. What I don't want to do is start my day distracted or by comparing to other people. Mm -hmm. So don't check media, social media until dot, dot, dot. And you decide what the dot, dot, dot is. Got it. Next one. Don't one up. <laughs> okay. Sorry. He's just, he was just so, waving at me from with a piece of bread. Oh, he snuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Bodie, out, buddy, please. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is uh this is a principle in terms of connection, in terms of um, um, uh, relating to people, better relationships, being a better person in general. It's like don't one up. Let people don't hijack stories. If someone's telling a story, if someone's giving an idea, don't um oh oh I'll try to outdo them with one of yours. And the obvious example, this is someone's like you know. Um, one time in college, I, um, I, I, I got a fender bender and next person's like, Oh yeah. And I, you know, uh, a couple, um, weeks ago, I, um, I saw someone get hit uh, in person. Like I got someone hit on a bicycle and man, it was catastrophic. Like they're, they're stealing, they're hijacking the story. Like it, we don't have to have the need to always pull the story back to us and re 
I get what people are trying to do is they're trying to relate and they're trying to say like, yes, I, but what ends up happening is your, you, your story hijacking. And what happens in a time like this where everyone's sharing something and the, I, I, I did this the other day and it's a small thing. It doesn't have to be like my, like, how'd you do on Fran today? Oh, I did it in uh, four fifteen. That's great. And did you know that my PR is two fifteen? Mm. Like, like you're always one upping and trying to like actually outdo the other person. If you listen to people's conversations, it's really funny. Go to a cocktail party and just listen to conversations. All that happens is somebody brings something up, and the next person goes around and they go around the circle, giving their example of how they have experienced the same thing. That's not the way to connect with people. That is, here is my take. Here's my take. The way to connect with people is to dig into their experiences. Now, what happens in a time like this is people are always sharing um, what their experience with COVID. Mm-hmm. And it's a small thing as Maya, my daughter, the other morning said, do you know that 60 people have died in Massachusetts today from the coronavirus? And what I did was I one up the story. And I said, you know, that 600 people a day are dying in New York. Like I had, there's this incessant need yeah. that we have to come over the top with something even greater. Instead of me saying like, oh my gosh, that is a crazy stat. I can't believe it because we live in Massachusetts. Yeah. That is crazy. Can you think of all the families that are being affected by that? Where did you hear about that stat? Like in letting her have the limelight, for some reason, I felt the need to one up it. And now mine was even better. Like, oh, yeah, you think that you have a great stat? Like, I have a better one. Everyone's always doing this. Like, they'll talk about, like, um, what's happening uh, in China. Yep. And you hear that the hospitals are closing down. They're like, well, did you hear this? Well, did you hear this? And just back up a little bit and let people have that moment. Instead, connect with them with their story, not hijacking your own. Mm-hmm. The next one is uh, don't project. Okay, so this more so than ever, but in general, like we don't want to project. And I'm going to say now more than ever, I'll kind of tie it back to the, 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 the kind of reasons or the, the, the philosophy behind this. We don't want to project when this is going to be over. Yeah. Uh, because you're – most likely you're going to be wrong. Mm-hmm. And even if you're right, so what? But the idea is – it becomes overwhelming or daunting, or either you become the pessimist or the optimist. Neither one of those things are helpful. What we want to be is extreme realist, and from the extreme realist, just be focused on the present moment. Whenever you are projecting and trying to figure out when this thing's going to be over, now, the one caveat to this is trying to plan for business or something like that, or trying to plan to make sure you're safe or something like that. But beyond that, of like trying to just be the optimist or then just be the pessimist, you're actually doing yourself a disservice. And here's the reason why it's called, um, and again, this goes back to like Victor Frankl and his experience in Holocaust camps, or um, it's called, actually called the Stockdale Paradox, named after, um, um, I think it was General Stockdale, who experienced uh, uh, five years of prisoner of war camp in Vietnam. And the idea behind the Stockdale par- Paradox was the people that lived the longest through these horrific experiences were not the optimist. The optimist said, like, it's going to be over by dot, dot, dot. In their case, they would say, like, it's, we'll be out of prison work camp by Christmas. And Christmas would come and go, and they weren't out. And then, oh, my gosh, they'd go, okay, we're going to be out by um, St. Patrick's Day or Valentine's Day. And it would come and go, and they wouldn't be out. And then they would lose hope. And the optimists, strangely enough, were the first to die. Mm. When people lose hope, they die. And here's the thing about, let me tie it back even farther to hope. There's a study done by University of California, Berkeley about hope. And here was the study. And I've referenced this before on this podcast. They took Norwegian field mice, very common breed of mice, and they had them do a uh, swim test. And the swim test is they put them in a tank to see how long they could tread water before they became completely exhausted and drowned. It's a horrific test. And I'm sorry for the mice. Um, But what they did to um, test hope was they redid the study. And by the way, they figured out that Norwegian field mice can swim for about three and a half hours. A long time to tread water. That's pretty incredible. Um, And by the way, none of these mice are going like, it's not a psychological thing. They're not going like, oh man, I just, I wish I didn't have that cookie last night. I'm just not going to tread water long today. It's not like us in workouts. They're going for survival. Like 
these animals will chew their own arm off to survive. Um, so this is literally, they found out that the longest they can swim is three and a half hours. Well, they redid the test, except the, the next time they did it, again with Norwegian field mice in the same tank, they took this group of mice, and just before they reached complete exhaustion, at about the three-hour mark, they pulled them out of the tank, just for a minute or two, and then put them back in. What they did was gave these mice hope. They gave them hope that they would be rescued. And these mice swam for seven hours. They literally doubled the amount of time that they could survive based off of hope. So you would think optimists have the most hope, but they don't. Because when hope comes and goes and it's gone, then it's gone. And they're like, oh my God. And they crush and they crumble. We don't want to be extreme. We don't want to be eternal optimists. Now, the next people that died were the pessimists. Where the people that are like, we're never freaking getting out of here. This sucks. This is terrible. We're never getting out of here. Um, they were the next to go, but actually they survived longer than the optimists. The people that survived the longest, Stockdale, were the extreme realists, which said, hey guys, we might not get out of here for a very long time. But you know what? Today is not that bad. We can deal with today. We can deal with this moment right now. In fact, if you bring super micro focus on us, this moment right now is not actually all that bad. It's the daunting experience of the extreme extremity of this whole thing. The saying that catherine has been using recently is like, um, we've had a few friends that have made extreme life decisions in this moment. Either they're shifting careers, quitting jobs, breaking up with people. Um, her saying is like, like the Navy SEALs, like don't quit until the sun comes up. Mm. Like you can't, like it's so hard in this little short term window right now. Don't like in hell week, never quit in the middle of the night, at least get through the night because when the night is the hardest part, never make these rash decisions when it's hardest. What we want to do is get to the end. And when it's like, okay, you have this breath of like fresh air, then you can make those decisions. What I'm saying is like during this time of quarantine, the self isolation, like, dude, like just get through today. And then a month after we get back to real life, if then you're like, okay, let's, um, um, decide that we're not with the right life partner partner. Like let's make a decision. Then yeah. what we don't want to do is like put extreme focus on these little tiny things right now. So this gets back to the principle of like, don't do right now. Don't project, yeah. don't project when this is going to get done. Don't project that we're going to get done. This, we might be done with this in two weeks. Yes. We might not be done with this for two months. We might not be done with this in six months. You know what? That doesn't really matter unless you're trying to create a runway for your business or planning for family routines or whatever it might be. But in terms of just guessing for the sake of guessing, don't project. This also ties back to a principle we have with our elite athletes at the games. We don't project and try to guess what the next workout is. It's wasted matchsticks. You're burning up energy. You're wasting time that could be put towards other things. Like instead of discussing, what do you think the workout's going to be tomorrow? What do you think the workout's going to be tomorrow? You could be discussing, what should we do to prepare for tomorrow? What should we do to get more recovered? What should we do? Actually put it into productive thoughts, not wishing in the wind. Love it. The last one on our list, uh, you did hit on a little bit, but curious if there's anything you want to put on as a kind of a, a button to the conversation, but don't expect perfection. Yeah, this kind of, it actually ties back to one of the don't do's we had before. It was like, don't wait for perfect. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to shift that because don't wait for perfect has more to do with like uh, um, getting stuff done. Um, you know, um, here's the idea is like we, we're having this podcast right now and um, if I had perfection um, as the standard, we probably would be doing this podcast mm -hmm. because the sound isn't as great as it could be. Yep. And we've been interrupted three or four times by my five and seven year old as they run in. Yep. And um, this is not the perfect scenario to run a podcast with. Well, as Sheryl Sandberg said, you know, the CEO of Facebook is like done is better than perfect. Period. Like, Let's realize that things are not going to be just the way you want them right now. 
there's going to be – you're going to have to do things over Zoom calls instead of in face-to-face. You're going to have distractions from your family. You're not going to be in the office. You're not going to have um, total um, um, focus on certain things. Instead, just get things done. I love it. Done is better than perfect. This is, that, um, that quote from Sheryl Sandberg is one of the things that we've brought into our business and our team because – when you chase excellence, um, one of the things that can be, and also when it's a matter of, um, you know, let's leave it at that. When you're chasing excellence, it can be this type of thing like, well, like, let's wait. Let's wait. It's not perfect yet. It's not perfect yet. It's not perfect yet. And perfect is the, can actually be the enemy um, because what you end up doing is, you know, in terms of Seth Godin talk, is like you never ship it. Mm-hmm. Like it's better to ship it. In terms of the, you know, um, lean manufacturing, the lean startup idea, is um, it's about build, measure, learn, iterate. What you want to do is instead get it done. You know, MVPs, A/B testing is get it out into the world. It's actually better to just shift, to like get a half done project, get it out there to the team, to everyone, to the public, to whatever it is, and then from there learn. Like, is this better or not? When you strive for perfection, you actually wait and you try to button up the last. Eight, five, two percent, which is totally unnecessary. Yeah. It's actually better to get to seventy percent, and then get it out there and learn so much, and then worry about the remaining thirty percent even down the road. Um, you're gonna get way more done just shipping it, just building it, just launching it, just sharing it, or just doing it. <laughs> Steal from Nike. Um, just do the podcast and realize it's not going to be perfect. And that's okay now more than ever. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Thank you to everybody out there. Hope everybody's doing well. We will see you all next week. You can get every episode of Chasing Excellence wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Until next time, thank you for listening.